Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. I'm so excited because I finally have the Canon 200 to 800. I've been waiting for this lens for what seems like ages. I'm so excited. Us Canon users have been demanding or wanting a zoom lens with lots of reach for a long time. You know, we've been jealous of the Sigmas, the Sonys, the Nikon even. Finally, we have our own for Canon. So what I'm gonna do, if you're new to the channel, I'm a wildlife photographer. To review this lens, I need to use it. That means I need to get out into the field and take thousands and thousands of photos on different cameras. I'm gonna try it on the R5, the R7, the R6 Mark II. I'm gonna go into different habitats, wetlands, forest, low light, bird and flight, you name it. I'm gonna be testing it and I absolutely can't wait. I'm confident that this lens is gonna be sharp and it's going to deliver exceptional results. So I've had a look online and there's quite a few negative thoughts about this lens mainly to do with the f9 aperture so I want to see is that really an issue what sort of shots can we get at f9 are we going to have adequate depth of field are we going to have enough light I'm going to try and answer those questions and just the usability of the lens how heavy is it how big is it so my first session was actually not here it was at a slightly different location got there early it's a little bit overcast so we still had a little bit of color and so to take advantage of that color that I had I actually decided to do a few bird in flight and try and capture like a backlit bird as it's flying through the sky you know we've got that beautiful color and 800 millimeters is quite a lot of reach and so I've gone to 800 millimeters and the birds were a long way off in the sky and I've tracked them the tracking on the R5 is fantastic and we got a load of shots and I'm confident that a couple of them turned out I know we had a whistling kite flying around I think we had some glass I think we had some pelicans you name it they were flying around and we tried to get some photos of that you know it was still a lot of fun and uh, the autofocus was working fine so far uh, so that, that was pleasing I spotted a great egret as it was flying and it's flying towards the sun and we've got the beautiful color it's backlit and this lens just tracked it perfectly no issue whatsoever and we managed to get hopefully this really nice shot and then I decided to come to this spot which you would have seen in a recent video because we've got some black fronted dotterels walking around in the mud and so I've got down nice and low and we've taken a heap of shots and these images are sharp I mean I'll get home on the computer and look at them but on the back of the camera I think this lens is sharp wide open at f9 which is fantastic so if this lens is sharp at 800 mil what we can't ask for much more than that that was my big concern is was it sharp and so far it appears to be sharp which is just awesome then i've had a yellow billed spoonbill just feeding here so i got down low and tracked it and took a number of shots so <laughs> we've had it the, my first impressions from this very first session is I'm happy it seems to be working well so far so good I need to do a lot more sessions to get a good feel for it look on the computer etc but so far it's positive which is good we need to keep going we need to go to somewhere else and just keep using the lens and I'll keep sharing photos with you well g'day and welcome back I've jumped forward a few days I've actually been using this lens in the field for the last three or four days sort of non-stop I've taken thousands of images and I want to share with you the photos share with you the good the bad I can't wipe the smile off my face because I'm loving it to be honest I'm really enjoying this lens the ability to have 800 millimeters is just fantastic well 200 to 800 and I want to share with you what I've been up to so after I finished at those wetlands I actually met up with my good mate Jan who's got his own YouTube channel make sure you check that out he actually got the 200 to 800 as well so we had two of them and we decided to go out into the field I used the R5 he used the R7 and we took some photos of an eastern yellow robin and I had a lot of fun the R5 performed very well we didn't have a lot of light and I got this shot and look I'm very happy with this it looks awesome to me let me know what you think of it but this is great quality I'm very happy with this so that first session big smile performed very well very very happy the next morning Jan has actually come to my property and we've spent the morning photographing the beautiful hooded robin a little black and white bird we got it in a different different purchase we used a whole lot of different lenses we used the 100 to 500 with a converter without a converter the r5 the r7 different focal lengths now all those comparisons will be in a later video i'm going to do the full review and share all that with you yarn will be doing the same so make sure you subscribe to his channel and he will definitely be sharing these comparison shots ultimately we took so many shots we've done our very very best to use this in real world conditions taking photos so you can get a feel of what sort of shots you can get with all these different cameras but ultimately i took some shots i'm very very happy with i think the detail on this hooded robin you probably couldn't guess what lens it was taken with now we've got a lot of concerns about the f9 aperture a lot of people saying what are the backgrounds going to look like how are we going to shoot in you know 
bad light, etc. Now I'm very fortunate that we have great light in Australia, but look at the shot. This background is out of focus because we've got so much focal length, the subject's isolated, no issue whatsoever. I'm very, very happy with this. And we also notice with the image stabilization, the image stabilization on the R5 is almost 100 to 500 steady. It's really steady. You're gonna be able to shoot video handheld with this. Even me, as a, I shake a lot. But overall, a wonderful morning, lots of shots. We were both happy. It was great to catch up with him. And uh, it didn't end there. We then got the opportunity to photograph one of our prettiest parrots. I say that with all our parrots because they're all beautiful but we managed to photograph some turquoise parrots. Now these parrots are a specialty in the Warby Ranges where I live, it's this mountain range over here. We spent a couple of days just photographing this wonderful bird with again, with all the different cameras. I predominantly used the R7 and the 200 to 800 and I was very happy with the shots I was able to get. So I photographed this female on a branch. This detail is excellent. I have no issue with this. And we were quite a way away. And that's the advantage of this lens is you don't have to be super close. And that's one of the hardest things with wildlife getting close to your subject. At 800 mil, you can be quite a way off and still get a sizable subject. So very, very happy with the detail that we got here. And I also managed to photograph the female on this perch. And again, the advantage of a zoom lens I was able to zoom out, change the composition, include more habitat, and I just like this overall feel where the bird's a little bit smaller in the frame. Now, if I was at 800 mil or a prime lens, I wouldn't have that flexibility. So again, that's wonderful in the zoom lens. Now, we actually spent a number of sessions with this bird or these birds. The next day, we went in the morning because we had nice light and we both wanted a male really badly and we got a male, he's not quite as colorful as some of the other males, but I'm still happy to see it. I've got that blue face. He's actually landed on a very similar perch to the female. And again, in this nice light, I just love these shots. I think the detail is excellent and it shows you what's possible in good light on the R7. I can't complain, to be honest. It looks very, very good. I took shots at 800, I took shots at 600, 400, sort of just to show you how much of a difference this 800's doing. So we've got a shot at 600, and then we've got a shot at 800. And you can see the difference. It just makes that subject much bigger. Now, I did have a female land on a cherry ballard. I've noticed it, and I've swung around with the R7. I've focused, it's, the eye tracking's gone to the bird. I've taken a heap of shots thinking, oh, this is awesome. And when I start checking the shots, the dreaded R7 autofocus has struck in this scenario. And you can see that some of them are soft. If we go through, we've sort of got okay, soft. It's gone onto the, you can see how it's focused on the tree and then it's come forward, it's come back. Fingers crossed, we got at least one image that was sharp, but those are the dramas that we face, well, I face with the R7 from time to time, just that inconsistent autofocus. However, very happy with that image. But unbelievably, while we're, in our blinds, a little eagle flies past. Now, in Australia, we've got a few eagles. We've got that big wedge-tailed eagle. We also have an eagle called the little eagle because it's a lot smaller. Now, I've only photographed this a couple of times. So this bird's just hovering around in the sky, R5, hand-held, whip it out, and just taking some bursts of shots as it's flying around. The focus has worked extremely well. We've got a range of photos, and I got my best ever little eagle flight shots. I could not be happier. Here's the image. Uh, the detail is just fantastic. And what it showed me with bird and flight is zoom lenses have a big advantage over primes in my opinion, because you can zoom out, you can find the subject, and then you can zoom in. Photograph, 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 you lose it, zoom out, pick it up, and then go backwards and forwards. And 800 mil allows you to get nice and close, makes that subject really big, and you get details like you've seen. So for bird and flight, I reckon this lens is pretty good. However, and there's no escaping this. Because this lens is f9, we don't get as much light as a faster lens. And even though I was shooting in pretty good conditions with light, because I wanted a faster shutter speed, I think it was 1600th of a second or 2000, I actually had to go to 1600 ISO. That's pretty high for bird and flight in a bright sky. Most lenses you'll be at 400 ISO because um, you've got so much light. But because we're at f9, you're always gonna struggle with action or having fast shutter speeds because F9 just doesn't let in enough light. And that's probably one of the bigger weaknesses of the lens. I know many of you are worried about that. However, um, it's just something you need to be aware of. It didn't stop me though. The R5 handles ISO wonderfully. We come to the end of the session. And honestly, if you ask me, Dwayne, what's your first impression of the 200-800? I'm gonna say really good. 
I have no regrets whatsoever. And that's the key, isn't it? Do you have regret after buying a lens? I have zero regrets buying this lens. I am gonna to continue to use this. I love the ability of having all that range. Yes, it's a little bit slow. Yes, it's a slightly heavy at that two kilos, but it's just fun. And that's the key for me. Is it fun? What are the sort of shots we can get? And the photos you've seen in this video are showing you what sort of photos you can get with this lens. And you can see I'm a little bit animated because I've just enjoyed it. It's, it's like you can have it next to you or you're wandering out in the bush. Oh, there's the subject, 800 mil. Makes the subject quite big. And you can wander around. And I just think I've just been waiting for a lens like this for a long time. Us RF users have wanted it. Canon have given us this. Yes, it's divisive because it's slow, but it's different. You're not gonna get 200 to 800 really any other way except if you use a converter. But in my opinion, credit to Canon and my, it's just good, I like it. Now, let's talk about the positives and the weaknesses because there are some weaknesses. I don't wanna just sugarcoat this and say, it's incredible, go out and buy one. You need to be aware of the shortcomings of this lens and I'll go through those. The first thing, the positive, I've already mentioned lots of them, 200 to 800, amazing. Change your composition, make the subject bigger. Just to demonstrate how much bigger the subject can be, I'm driving along this road here. There's a brown falcon sitting in a tree. Thankfully, it was a very good brown falcon and it was a perfect model. Thank you so much. I've got out of the car, I've wandered up here and I had the R7 on, 1280 mil field of view and I've almost filled the frame and I'm 30 or 40 meters away. And you can see how big this is. We took some shots and we got the details fine. And you know, it's incredible that you can be that far. So that range is one of the massive positives. The next thing I like is it's not too heavy for an 800 millimeter lens. It's definitely bigger than the 100 to 500. There's no escaping the size of it, but I've been hand holding this majority of the time and I don't really have an issue. Uh, the IBIS is really good, especially on the R5. Love the IBIS. Um, R7, not as good, but R5 can't complain. So image quality, very good so far. It's not as sharp as the primes, but it's sharp enough. It's adequate, more than adequate, and you're not gonna be disappointed. So the fact that we can shoot at 800 F9 is good. It's not soft. So if it had been soft at 800 F9, I would have had a massive issue. I would have been really disappointed. So I'm happy that you can shoot at 800 F9 and still get sharp shots. I'd still advise maybe going to F10, just to slightly improve sharpness. And I think it will be a little bit sharper at 600 mil than it is at 800, but we can still shoot at 800 without an issue. The price, the price is pretty good. I think in America, I'll put the price, the US price, very competitive compared to the Sony and the Nikon, etc. In Australia, it's a little bit more expensive than the Sony, but about on par with the Nikon. I think it's around 3,400 Australian dollars, which in my opinion, for this quality of lens, it's, it's fine. So those are the positives. I'm sure there'll be more in my review, but that's just what's coming to my head. There are some negatives, and let's go through those negatives. The first one is for me, and it struck me straight away, is this zoom is too tight. It's too tight for me. So if you're hand holding like this and you're at 200 and you wanna to go to 800, it's one, two, three, four turns. Four turns is way too many. Four turns to go from 200 to 800, it's just too many. The Sony is just so much quicker. I love the Sony, the throw on the Sony is great. This is just a bit too tight for me. So I would have liked that throw to be quicker and not quite as stiff. The next thing, and this is a real annoyance and Canon, I don't know why you did this, but this lens foot or this tripod collar is not removable. You can't take it off like on the RF 100 to 500 and many of their other lenses. It is stuck like this and look at it, it's huge. So when you travel or trying to put it in your bag, you're always gonna have this, this foot. You can't take this foot off. So it's, you can't detach it. You can move it around out of the way up here like this, but you're always gonna have this tripod collar. Now that adds unnecessary weight. It's big, it gets in the way. We should have been able to remove it or at least take this foot off. Um, now it's not Arca Swiss compatible straight away, which is an annoyance. You have to put an extra foot on here if you wanna use it on a tripod. Um, it's just Canon, that's a real design flaw in my opinion. Uh, they really should have let us take that off just to save the weight. So that's really disappointing. Uh, the next design feature that I'm disappointed with is the smooth tight ring. I don't even know why they've taken up the space to be honest. When we have it on smooth, the, it's so tight that there's no creep anyway. The barrel doesn't come out unless you really 
pull on it to get the barrel to come out. The barrel's pretty much going to stay there. It's not going to come out that much. I would have preferred like a little switch to lock it. And the reason I'm talking about this is Canon have removed the dedicated manual focus ring that we get on the 100 to 500, which I really like. Instead, what they've done is they've given us this control ring, which acts as a control ring or a manual focus ring. You can't do them both at the same time. There's a switch on the side of this lens that says autofocus, control ring, manual focus. So you lose the extra control ring if you want to use a manual focus ring, which I do. I love to use the manual focus ring. In case it locks onto the background, I can quickly change that. So I've lost, it doesn't have a dedicated control ring for say your aperture on your um, R7 or however you might be using it. That is a fail. Canon should have given us another ring somewhere here, um, maybe done away with the smooth tight. And they have given us some lens function buttons, which is nice, but it's lacking that extra control ring, which in my opinion is really a must have. They should have had that there. Um, so that is disappointing. Obviously the F9, I've already mentioned that, it's gonna be a struggle in really low light. You're gonna have to use high ISO and really low light. It doesn't make it a deal breaker. Well, it depends on what you shoot in. I don't think it's as big an issue because these modern cameras allow you to shoot at much higher ISO. So I shot in some low light and you know we did have to use high ISO, but I think it's a trade-off for that 800 mil. Would you rather a 600 6.3 or would you rather an 800 F9? And that's gonna vary, but I think a lot of people want the reach. And at 600, it's at F8. Um, so, you know, let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, if they'd gone faster, it would have been way bigger. So it's a compromise to keep the size, well, it's not small, but to keep it this size and this weight, they sort of had to go with F9. So I don't have a big issue, but that is obviously a bit of a weakness. Those are just a few things that popped into my head after using it. Overall though, very happy. I think uh, the proof is in the pudding and the images I've been able to take, I've been very, very happy with. So I've been talking nonstop. Um, as you can see, I'm happy with it. I'm sure you'll be happy with it. If you already own it, let us know in the comments what your thoughts are. If you wanna know something specific, leave it in the comments. I will read it for that review. Again, make sure to jump onto Jan's channel, see what he says about it. Until that next video, obviously thumbs up this one. If you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more of these videos. Uh, thanks to all my existing members, my new members enables me to make these videos and I'm just having a lot of fun. So until the next one, take care, happy birding. See you later.